It was an unusually warm and sunny Sunday in March. The sort of day which makes everybody feel younger and happier. Everybody, that is, except the puppy Watermiths. The following morning, he was going to school for the very first time. School, away from his mother, among strangers, not knowing how he was supposed to behave, where to go, what to do. He howled and howled. Until the humans who lived in his house thought he'd hurt his paw and gave him a large piece of old cheese. He was very fond of food, so he forgot all about school until he'd eaten the cheese. Then he remembered and the fear and sadness returned. What a mess curled up in his misery hole. This was a hole in the middle of the compost heap, which he dug whenever he was miserable. It was a bit smelly, but cosy and warm, and he was such a scruffy animal that nobody could tell which bit was puppy and which bit was compost, so nobody knew he was there. I don't want to go to school tomorrow, he whimpered. I'm frightened of school, but what can I do? <laughs> He'd never felt so lonely in his life. If only I had someone who would understand. Then he remembered he did have a friend, a little mongrel dog called the Archbishop of Canterbury, whom he'd met at the seaside. He'll understand and help me. He had no idea where the seaside was, but he reckoned if he ran far enough, he was bound to come to it. He knew it was a long way away, so he decided to start immediately. So he leapt from the compost heap and ran up the garden at full speed. At exactly the right moment, he went for liftoff. As what a mess was getting his breath back and wondering whether he'd broken anything, he felt an odd prickly feeling under his front paws. You saved my life, tall very much, but for you I would have been squashed. Oh yes, bust flat I would have been. Between his paws was a little animal covered in spines. It's the hot weather, that's the problem, said the creature. Woke me up from my winter sleep too early. I got halfway across the road and was too tired to go any further, so I lay down for a bit of a ziz. Saw the bus coming, couldn't move. Bye bye me, I thought, then whoosh! You scooped me up just in time. I'm a hedgehog. How do you do? said Watermiss, who was still very dazed but had been well brought up. My full name is Watermiss, but my nickname is Prince Amir of Kinjan. Uh, no, the other way round. Oh, no, I couldn't possibly call you Prince Amy of Kinjan. No, the other way round. I'll just call you Watty. And may I ask your name, said the puppy politely. I haven't got one. What a mess in his weak state. Suddenly felt terribly sorry about this. I'll give you one. Are you a boy or a girl? I don't know. What's the difference? What a mess thought. I'm not sure. My mother's a girl, so perhaps girls are the ones who have babies. Oh, I like that. Can I be a girl, please? Oh, I suppose so. You talk more like a boy. But if you like, I'll call you 
Cynthia. Oh, marvellous. Well, Watty, said the hedgehog, feeling tired again. Yes, Cynthia, said the puppy. I must crawl back to my leaves in the wood and finish my winter sleep. I, I can't thank you enough for your heroic deed. Perhaps one day I'll be able to do the same. Cheery bye. All the best. Happy days. What a mess. Watch the little hedgehog make its sleepy way back towards the open country. The next morning, Watermess was taken to Mrs. Tibbetts' Puppy Training Academy. The teacher was Mrs. Wentworth Blaze, a frighteningly large lady with a booming voice and huge red hands. Sit! The puppy was so scared, he was sick into the top of her gumboot. By Thursday, it became clear what a mess didn't understand anything which Mrs. Wentworth Blaze told him and was bottom of the class. The puppies were awarded plus marks for things which they did well and minus marks for mistakes. He lost six marks for eating his identity card. He lost eight marks for disappearing before Mrs. Wentworth Blaze's lesson on obeying the whistle and hiding in the hen coop. He lost 35 marks for failing to understand the commands sit, stand, lie down, get up, fetch and walk is. And doing walking to heel on the lean, he ran round and round Mrs. Wentworth Blaze, causing her to topple over. <whistles> Minus 500 marks. surprise he found that school, apart from the lessons, was terrific fun. During playtime all the puppies mucked about in the field and Watermess found that he was the best at inventing games. Then came the shock. The next morning all the puppies were lined up and told that it was time for their exams. Each was to be given a different initiative test and any puppy who failed would have to leave the school immediately. What a missus task was to nose an old cricket ball through little doorways cut into planks of wood. Oh, he tried, of course, but the ball sailed through the air and fell to the ground behind the plank. What a mess galloped round to retrieve it. Cynthia, he gulped. What oh what he said the little hedgehog. My turn to do you a good deed. Quick, give me a push. <laughs> What a mess was too excited to sleep that night. He lay in his basket, chewing a new bone which he'd been given for passing his test. Suddenly, he had a prickly feeling under his front paws. There, at the saucer of milk, was Cynthia. A compass team, a kitchen mum, an old fur coat with a bird on top, a moving mess of unpleasantness, good grief, what a mess. Eggshells, porridge, bell to rank, is this prince a mere of in jam? In toast and ketchup, you'll never guess. Oh no, what a mess, though he's not a pretty sight. He really tries to do things right. With a mother who's tall and slim I wonder how she ever thought of him A shock 